Once again, we return to the green and pleasant land of Northumberland's countryside. In last Friday's video, I recapped our mad dash around seven castles in two action-packed days. In this video, I will share a vlog of the other lovely stuff we saw in those days that were not castles. Stay tuned for lovely countryside, pretty towns, and yet another rather interesting toilet. a coincidence that Harry Potter was filmed at Anik, and this right here is Pottergate. I just looked up information on this tower and would you believe it is a holiday let? You can book a stay for two people in this luxury three-story tower. Pretty cool. Also cool is this look from a vintage postcard at what the tower and street looked like 200 years ago. I showed you a bit of Anik Castle last week, so now let's look at another famous landmark in town, the statue of Harry Hotspur. And now my hot husband is gonna tell us who Harry Hotspur is. <laughs> so Harry Hotspur was one of the famous, the most famous knights in medieval England and he was made a knight at 13 years old. Wow. He um, was named Hotspur by the Scots who he fought against because of his speed and aggressiveness in battle. And he's also one of the, the famous characters in Shakespeare's play, Henry IV. And what does he have to do with Anik? He was born here. He was born at Anik Castle. Harry Hotspur. Son of Anik. Anik really is a cool little town, and I love the cheeky name of this pub. Now, if you lived in these parts, you would probably pronounce the name of this pub like the Doi Balls, but as I have confirmed many times, I am rubbish at accents, so that will be the end of my performance. This is a fascinating pub in a building from the 1600s that was originally known as Ye Old Cross Inn. But due to the famous curse of the dirty bottles, they changed the name of the pub and kept the untouched filthy bottles in the front window. We didn't test the curse of the dirty bottles, but we did use the toilets. So here's a little video of what they looked like. Okay, these are like the coolest toilets. It's right next to Anik Castle. You go from a really castle kind of vibe here to your own private toilet room. The road is straight, but very hilly. So it's like a roller coaster ride. Every time we go over one of these, woo, it just like leaves your stomach behind on the hill behind you. It's a cloudy overcast morning, but here in the middle of the Northumberland countryside is a rapeseed field, which still is just glowing and brilliant yellow, despite the cloudy day. After visiting the castle, we took a look around the town of Warkworth, and I had a chance to pose with a dragon. I love seeing a hilly town where all the buildings on each side of the road have stair-stepping roofs stepping down the sloping street. I think it's so pretty, and it's a sight I see often in Britain. Gotta reinforce the branding with sights around the town of Warkworth. Luckily, the St. Lawrence Church was open, so we enjoyed having a look around. And admiring this ancient archway leading to the nave, which looks like it might be Norman, possibly Saxon.
So this part of the church is from the 1400s. Because you can tell by You the, can tell by the Gothic architecture. Especially um, the windows, the shape yeah. of the windows. Um, this, this side of the church was built in the 1100s. It was, it, it's Norman, and you can tell by the rounded arches. Also has very thick walls because this was a pay, place of refuge um, when there were Scottish raiders or Danish raiders that came to the area that the townsfolk would take refuge in the church. This tomb is amazing. It depicts a knight. It's called the Knight's Tomb, and it's from the 1300s. And this sh shield has a coat of arms from a family in Durham. It's interesting that the knight is laying cross-legged and has a little doggy here at his feet. If you have seen any of my previous church visits, you know I like to find little obscure things that interest me in every church. This was one of those things, a tablet in memory of John Appleby, in which he is described as suddenly exchanging mortality for life. And this rather ominous scripture from Matthew quoted at the bottom, Be ye also ready. We had a lovely stroll along the river Cocket, back to where we had parked our car. On the edge of town was a street name that made me frantically ask Ian to stop the car. He was good enough to play along with my sophomore extensive humor and pose for this cheeky Instagram photo. I wanted to pose appropriately by this sign, but Ian refused. <laughs> I guess he still has his dignity. This was my favorite thing about driving around Northumberland. You would just see these random ruins by the side of the road. The historic St. Aidan's Church is near the famous Bambara Castle. Really, Bambara is a place you need to spend a whole day, enjoying the church, the formidable castle, and the very long stretch of gorgeous beach. But of course, our visit this time was too brief, so I'll just share a wee walk around the church in this video. This site has been a place of worship since 635 AD. The current church is named after St. Aidan, a monk of Irish birth who traveled all the way from Iona, an island off the west coast of Scotland, to bring Christianity to this part of Northumberland. He was a missionary who traveled all over northern England, preaching and teaching people of all social classes and ages. He founded the Lindisfarne Island Priory and was its first bishop. Here is a unique monument, and this is me reading the sign displayed next to it. A memorial of Grace Darling, a Christian girl who heroically risked her life to save the sailors of the Forfarshire wrecked off the Farne Islands. Before you go, remember to say a prayer for all the sailors and those in danger at the sea. There are shells placed on this memorial. These were my favorite stained glass windows in the church, faith and charity. There is so much bright yellow gorse along the road as we're driving around here in Northumberland on the hilly <laughs> roads of the moors. You may remember Edlingham from our last video. 
the church with the castle ruin and lovely old bridge behind it. Edlingham today seems like a very remote and deserted place, but in the 8th century, it was a royal village with about 600 residents. Here is a little peek inside the St. John the Baptist Church. The tower was probably used for defense in the Northumberland raids. Can you imagine arrows flying from those narrow slit windows? It is a very small and simple Saxon church, but I love exploring each church I come across in Britain and always find something I find interesting. The interior of the church has both Gothic and Romanesque arches, as parts of the church were built in the 11th through 14th centuries. The south porch shows a fine example of a Norman arch. I'm so thankful for kind people. I really wanted to see inside this little medieval church and the, and the poster at the top of the hill said that it was closed due to COVID. But then when I got up to the door, it was open and I peeked inside and two people were in there cleaning. And they said I could come in and have a look. So it was so nice. I really feel like that was a little lucky break I got. I also love looking around churchyards. The old tombstones with sweet inscriptions and perhaps some other grave markers that by today's standards might look a bit gruesome. Most Americans would assume this is a pirate's grave. As I mentioned last Friday, Ford and Eatle are villages in a combined estate which the Joycey family purchased a century ago and made into a well-preserved historical destination. We're in the beautiful village of Eatle. What's interesting about these houses is that they have these massive slates on them. This is the village hall. And you've got some thatched houses. And then right down there is the castle. Here we have the post office. We are in the stunningly picturesque village of Ford right now, just having a quick little wander around and I'm going to show you the amazing homes here. Victorian homes, shops, post boxes, even this Jubilee Cottage from 1887 built to honor Queen Victoria's 50 years as monarch. As an aside, I have to mention how much I enjoyed being in Britain for Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee. I had never seen the Brits be so patriotic and I was so enamored I took photos of all the Union flag buntings everywhere. And not coincidentally, that is the summer I learned what a bunting was. I'm looking forward to being in Britain next year for Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee celebration. This was my favorite spot in Ford Village. It is a monument placed here by Louisa Ann Beresford, an Irish aristocrat called Marchioness of Waterford, who came to Ford in 1859 when she was a young widow at age 40. She is largely to credit for Ford being the beautiful village that it is. Lady Waterford was responsible for founding the village school and decorating it with its 
famous life-size murals. This fountain was placed here to honor her late husband, Henry Beresford, who died in an accident at age 48. While he was reportedly a fine husband and upstanding citizen in his more mature years, he apparently had a bit of a wild youth. He is the reason we have the saying, paint the town red. The origin story is extremely interesting if you want to look that one up. It's a lovely little walk between these giant trees from Ford Village to the church and castle. So this is Ford. I'm in the churchyard. And this is the castle. And the church. As you may recall from last week's castle video, James IV of Scotland stayed here on the 8th of September, 1513, before the Battle of Flodden the next day where he was killed. I wonder if he visited the church before setting into battle that fateful day. The parish church of St. Michael and All Angels has been a place of worship for over 800 years. I'm not sure how long they have been having a problem with swallows flying in the door. arches and the 13th century pillars are just beautiful. I love this grave marker at Ford Church. Which is beautiful. So the churchyard is really beautiful as is the view of the Northumberland Hills. But what's interesting is I've never seen this. All of the weeds and Queen Anne's lace have grown up really tall. You can imagine with this many gravestones, it would be impossible to mow the lawn. But it actually looks kind of pretty with all the Queen Anne's lace amidst these hundreds of ancient headstones. These are probably belted Galloways, but I shall call them Oreo cows. Now that I showed you the village of Ford, let me show you an actual Ford. All right, we are going through a Ford and I'm a little scared. But we made it, woohoo! I hope you enjoyed this little vlog of our adventures in Northumberland. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.